Hello, welcome to this week's edition of the Logo Builder. Hope you had a good week so far. First of all, thank you very much to the new subscribers who are joining us. It's great to have you on board. Do hope I can keep you entertained with some reasonable content. Today we're going to be looking at how to fit pickups to your kit-built locomotive. It's one of the sort of trickier things within the hobby, I think, just getting everything adjusted and correct. But the rewards are obviously worth it because you end up with that great kit-built locomotive. So without further ado, let's step over to the workbench and see how we get on. We're now ready to actually fit the pickups onto the London Road Models J3. Before you do that though, it's a good idea just to take the model onto a stage that you're happy with, i.e. get the chassis painted. So you can see here that I've just painted it black. I've given it a very light initial weathering. I've also added the wheels. I've painted those. Same on both sides. The wheels are fitted and quartered correctly. And I've also added the motor onto the center axle and tightened up the grub screw so that the motor is actually engaged at this moment in time. Now, as you can see, when I turn the model upside down, we've actually chosen quite a difficult model to fit pickups to because of these chassis springs here that are part of the model itself. So that's going to give us a little bit of problem when we come to fit the pickups because there's not really a huge amount of space underneath there to fit these pickups. However, if we can do this one, then I'm sure we can do any other model that we choose. So it's not a bad starting place and we'll try and get this one right first time. Now, in order to fit pickups you need some sort of board that conducts the electricity and for me I like to use this copper based board now this comes off eBay you can use something similar like PCB or Vero board something like that you just need to cut a couple of pieces of the board out and I just use a mini drill sorry not a mini drill well it's a mini drill but with a saw attachment on there to just cut out these pieces and as you can see here I've gapped them so I just run a slip through the middle of those just to ensure that these are both isolated from one another. I've got two pickup pads and all we need to do is fix those with super glue to the underside of the chassis. Just before we glue the parts onto the chassis it's important to mention the differences between a DC chassis and a DCC chassis. With a DC chassis you might well be running a live chassis that is you have one side of the wheels will be insulated However, the rest of the chassis is actually ca carrying electrical current. However, if you're running DCC, it's a good idea to make sure that the chassis is electrically dead. In order to do that, you need to use insulated wheels. I've used insulated wheels on both sides, uh, and they are demonstrated there. I hope you can see there's just a very, very fine little washer just between the tyre and the centre of the wheel which insulates the wheel from the axle itself, which means that the chassis now, because I've got insulated wheels both sides, will not carry any current. That's quite important with DCC because if the chip happens to touch a live part of the locomotive, then you're liable to fry your 25 quid chip. So you don't really want to do that. So for a belt and braces approach, I use insulated wheels both sides and I make sure that the chassis is completely electrically dead before I go any further. Now I'm not actually fitting a DCC decoder to this locomotive because I haven't got my layout yet, but I want to give myself the option so I build with both sides electrically isolated. Okay, let's now fit these pads to the underside of the locomotive. So you can see here, I've got two spaces to fit them. Not a lot of room under here, it's quite a small logo, but we've got one place there and one place there. So it takes importance when you're actually building this to think ahead to ensure you've got somewhere to actually fit these pickup pads. So I've already fitted one pickup pad to the back, I just need to fit this remaining one onto the front. Bit of super glue onto the frame there. And then simply drop this in. like so. Let that dry and then we can actually solder on the pickups themselves. Right, what we need to do now is to join up these pickup pads between front and rear so that we've got electrical current between each side. Not across, but to each side like so. And we're going to join wires onto this. First of all, we just need to add a little bit of flux and tin with some solder. Now, 
I said before for kit building, don't use this type of electrical solder, but for actual electrical soldering work, it's fine. So I'm just gonna go in with the solder gun. I've got this set to around about 370 Celsius. Pick up a little bit of solder on the iron like so. In there, and just a little bit of solder on there onto each pad just to tin it like that. So just to show you what we're trying to achieve here, I've done one side already. There's two wires going here and there's one wire going here. So the one, wire, uh, the one loose wire here is to fit to the actual motor itself and this wire joins between the two pickup pads ensuring electrical continuity between the two pads. So let's show you how we actually do that. Turn this upside down once more. First of all we need to cut some of this uh, thin flexible, flexible wire. I just need two lengths like so and then using these wire strippers here just take off one end like that same on this one and what I'm going to do is just to make it a little bit easier rather than soldering two individual pieces I'm just going to wrap these two together to make one piece that I'm soldering on to the rear pad so just pop these oops they've not quite joined There we are. So what I'm going to do is solder these two onto there like that. So in with a little bit of flux. Soldering iron. Pick up a bit more solder. and solder it in place like that. Give that a little tug to make sure it's secure. Then I'm gonna thread these two through. And then one of these is gonna be the wire for the motor, so it doesn't matter which, that one can do it. And then this one is going to be coming through here, so it's a bit like spaghetti actually doing this through there and I shall cut that one just like so strip with the wires strippers give that a little twist like that bend it so that it fits nicely now I go up through there and it's going to sit on the plate like so So again, flux, solder, and on it goes. There we are, that's both sides done now. So we've got pickup pads joined front to rear, and we've got two wires, which are gonna be for our motor pickups here and here. Now we can turn to actually fitting the pickups to the wheels themselves. So for fitting the actual pickups themselves in, I use 0.45 nickel silver wire. It's a good wire to use, it's very flexible and it doesn't tarnish over time. I found it to be quite reliable. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fit one pair of pickups onto this pad here. So that does one pickup will do two wheels, this one and this one, and then the rear one will do the rear wheel. So let's start off with the centre one first. I'm just going to cut a length of nickel silver wire. See how approximately long I need to make it. Probably a bit too long, but that's fine. And then I'm going to solder it on. So 
I'm just going to make a small bend at the back of this in order to help. Like that, just to help clear the gearbox there initially. So as usual, in with some flux on there. And then just picking up some more solder there, holding this away from the initial join that we made. And soldering on. Now that's in place nicely now. So you can see here we have a slight problem because we need to clear the gearbox with this pickup. This one is not so much of an issue. So what we need to do is make a bend in this so that this pickup touches this part of the wheel here. So I'm just going to remove some of the excess to help us do that. In fact, I need to remove a little bit more because of the guard iron. I'm just making that initial bend there. Okay, almost there. So you can see there that that pickup is almost touching the wheel. And now in order to get that to touch, I'm just going to bring in the pickup at this end and now that pickup is touching the rear of that wheel. Just going to trim that off. Not too close. And there you can hear the pickup is touching the wheel throughout the range, but it's also, most importantly, not touching the chassis. Right, I've just removed the motor from the chassis. It just gives us a bit more room, makes it a bit easier to play around with things. So you can see on this center pickup here that we've got a slight problem because the gearbox is actually touching that pickup. And we don't want that because that will cause a short circuit. So what we need to do is bend this up a little bit. So I'm just going to get my pliers, just bend up the pickup like so. And then I'm going to put a second bend in, just like that, just to sort of clear, clear the gearbox. Now that's clearing that with no problem whatsoever. The gearbox is going to sit in approximately that sort of orientation. So I've got some room. Let's just get that over there like so. So we've got like a double bend in there now. Still no chance of that touching. And now I'm going to bring the pick up in. Now this is all, you know, it is fiddly stuff. There's no doubt about this. There's no easy way to do this. It is literally just a case of being patient and trying to get things to work as best you can. So now that pickup's touching nicely on the rear of the wheel. It's not touching the chassis. So having fitted the pickups now to the rear of the chassis, I now need to do the front one as well. So this is a, a bit smaller. I only need to do one here. So just grab a piece of your wire, like so. Flux, soldering iron, and Dab of solder. Nice and secure, a nice shiny joint. Trim that off. 
and I'm just going to make the bend approximately where I think it needs to be. There we are. And then I'm going to bend in as well here. And as you can see now, when that wheel moves, the pickup still touches. It's not touching the axle. Trim off the excess. And that's one side done. Right, we're now ready to actually attach the wires onto the motor itself. I've reattached the motor in here. I'm just making sure that I've got the right side wire to the correct side of the motor. We can always reverse the polarity later should we need to and all I want to do is just attach that wire onto the motor pickup just like that. So I'm just going to twist the end of this just a little bit. Like that. There's a small hole there. I'm just going to slot that in. Just move my coupling rod out of the way, I don't need that. Flux. Plenty of flux as always. In with the soldering iron. And solder. That's a nice strong joint. Same on this side. Just going to twist this wire up. You'll notice that I'm leaving a bit of slack, and that's just to help me to get the motor into the actual frame of the locomotive itself. Because it's a bit of a tight fit, this one, I, to be honest with you. I probably left it a bit too tight. But there you go, you live and learn, I think I can make it work. That's nicely soldered on there now. And what we can do is get the test track connected and we'll try and run it. Well I hope you enjoyed that little look at how to fit pickups to your kit build locomotive. As I said earlier it is one of those tricky things that we have to do within the hobby but if you just take your time, have a clear mind before you start and think about what you're doing, you should be able to get on okay. Remember to have a look on Instagram, The Loco Builder and also if you can click like or subscribe on any of my videos on YouTube that would be fantastic. That's all from me this week, have a good weekend and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.